What's going on smart homers? My name's Aaron. Today I want to show you how to set the Broadlink RM4 Pro up in Home Assistant and how you can use it to control your projector setup in your home. Press start. Before we start, I want to say thanks to everyone who subscribed. Really appreciate the support and I hope you like this video. If you do, please hit the like button and subscribe if you wanna see more like it. So let me give you a little background. Before I started building my Spart Home, I bought a 100 inch projector screen that was motorized and I also bought a pretty cheapo projector. I had these set up for watching movies, but I always wished I could make them smart. This problem is now solved with the Broadlink RM4 Pro. It is super easy to set up in Home Assistant and automating them was a breeze. Now I can control both of them without the remotes and can even use a voice assistant to set them all up. Before I show how I set the whole thing up, and I will, I wanna quickly explain the difference between IR and RF. This is pretty important when you're setting these things up and when you're buying this device in the first place. This information is gonna help you if you're trying to troubleshoot issues with the setup in the future. Basically, RF and IR, which stand for radio frequency and infrared, are two different wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum. Both of these types of light have longer wavelengths or lower frequencies than visible light. This means you can't see them with your eyes. As you can see from this diagram, RF has a much longer wavelength and a lower frequency than IR. A cool thing to note about IR is that you can actually pick it up on most smartphone cameras. What you could do is turn on the smartphone camera and then point an IR remote at the camera and press a button. You're going to see some light coming out of the remote that you would not see with the naked eye. Pretty cool. This will depend on which phone you have because not all cameras will pick up infrared light as I understand it. These wavelengths are important because RF with the longer wavelength can pass through solids and walls, where infrared cannot. This difference between RF and IR is gonna be important later, so thanks for sitting through it. Okay, so let me explain how the RM4 Pro is going to work. The RM4 Pro works as both a transmitter and receiver of both RF and IR signals. The device can learn these signals or commands from remotes, and then can in turn send those commands or signals to the device that you're trying to control. The RM4 Pro can be integrated with Home Assistant, which allows for scripts and automation using these commands. Before you buy this, an important note is that the RM4 Pro only supports RF devices that run on 433 megahertz. You need to check your remote or your device to be sure that that is the frequency that it uses for the RF communication. If it doesn't, this RM4 Pro is not gonna work. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need to do is set up the RM Pro in the Broadlink app. All we're using the app to do is just to connect the RM Pro to the network. As soon as it's connected to your Wi-Fi, you don't need the app anymore, and you're gonna use Home Assistant from there on out. First, you're gonna plug in the RM4 Pro, and you're gonna download the Broadlink Universal Remote app. Once that's installed, you're gonna open it, you're gonna press the skip button, and then you're gonna select your region and press okay. You're gonna press okay again on the pop-up that appears. You're gonna read and accept the terms of service, and then you're going to sign in. You may need to create a Broadlink account if you haven't already. Once you're all signed in, you should be at the welcome home screen. Follow the instructions in the app to connect to your Broadlink device. Once you're connected, you should see the Broadlink device, the RM4 Pro, in the list of devices on the screen. All right, so now you're done with the app. You don't have to go any further. Next, you need to go to your router settings. Now this is gonna be different depending on what router you have, but you need to go to your router settings. You need to find the IP address of the Broadlink RM4 Pro that you just connected. And then you need to make that a static IP address. That means that every time the Broadlink is disconnected or connected from the router, it's still gonna use the same internal IP address. This is always a good thing to do if you're connecting something via Wi-Fi to Home Assistant. Okay, so now it's time to head over to Home Assistant. Click on Configuration, Integrations, and then look for the Broadlink integration. 
The RM4 Pro should automatically be picked up over your Wi-Fi, but if it's not, you can search for the integration by clicking add integration in the bottom right and find the Broadlink integration. And then you can put in the IP address that you just looked up on your router in and connect manually. So once it's integrated, now you can click configure and you can give your Broadlink RM4 Pro a name and a location if you want. Okay, so now comes the grind. Honestly, this is not hard at all. I have not had a difficult time with this in any way, but it is a little bit tedious depending on how many remotes you have and how many buttons those remotes have. What we're gonna do is we're going to have the RM4 Pro listen for commands, and then we're gonna press a button on a remote to send the command, and we're gonna have that command saved in Home Assistant. That way Home Assistant has learned the commands and can now send those commands through the Broadlink RM4 Pro. I only have two remotes for this project. The projector remote, which uses infrared, and the projector screen remote, which uses RF. Each button press is gonna to have to be learned individually. The first thing you're gonna do is head over to developer tools in Home Assistant and click services. On the services page, search for the remote.learn command service in the little search box. In the targets field, click pick entity and choose your RM4 Pro from the list. We're gonna run this service for each button that we want to learn in Home Assistant. Each time we run the service, we're gonna change the information before we learn the next button. You're gonna check the boxes next to device, command, and command type. The device field lets you give a name to the device that you're gonna be controlling. This could be whatever you want, but you wanna be consistent every time you program a button for the same remote. For example, I put in projector for the device name for my projector. The command field lets you give a name to the command. For example, power or up or down. This field is also completely custom. So you can put whatever you want, but you have to remember what that is if you wanna use that command later on in Home Assistant scripts. After this, choose the command type from the drop-down menu. There's two options, IR or RF. For my case, I'm doing the projector, so I'm gonna choose IR. Finally, click Call Service, and you should see a notification pop up in your notifications section in Home Assistant. The notification is gonna tell you to press the button on your projector remote. Point the remote at the RM4 Pro and press the button. This should make that notification go away. And there you have it, you learned your first command. That's not bad at all. Now you can repeat this step for each button on your remote. Each time you change the command name for whatever button that you're pressing. Because of what I said before about IR and how it doesn't pass through solids, you do need to make sure you point the remote directly at the RM Pro, specifically directly at the orange light on the front. This is important when you decide where you want to put the RM Pro because it needs to be in the room where your IR device is and it needs to be properly facing the device so that the device's receiver can pick up the signal. Next, we can program our RF remote, which is a little different than the IR, but not too much. In the service tab again, change the device name and the device field to whatever your RF device is. For example, I put in projector screen. For my screen, I'm only programming up, down, and OK buttons. In the command field, I put up, and I changed the command type to RF. When you click call service, you're gonna see a notification appear in the Home Assistant notification section again. If you click it, you're gonna see that this notification says that you need to hold down the RF button on your RF remote. Home Assistant uses the Broadlink RM4 Pro to perform a sweep of a short range of frequencies to find the signal's frequency. When it does so, that notification is gonna disappear and another one is gonna pop up telling you to press the button that you're holding once. Once you do that, it should have learned the RF command. Just like with the IR remote, you're gonna repeat this step over and over, changing the command name each time. Once that's done, you're all set to start sending commands with Home Assistant. There's nothing more to it. Pretty straightforward, eh? You can test these commands out if you want by changing the service to the remote.send command service. You select your RM Pro as the target again, and then you put in the device name and the command into the appropriate boxes and click call service. This should perform whatever command that you set it to. Remember that if you're trying to call a command for an IR device and your RM Pro isn't directly facing it, you could have some problems. The command may not be received by your device. So maybe we want to send a sequence of multiple of these commands by tapping a button in Home Assistant. In this case, we can write a script with multiple of these commands in it and then call that script using a loveless button card. On the scripts page, you're going to choose add script 
and then you're going to give it a name. In the sequence section for the first action, set the action type to call service. The service is going to be the same one you just tested, the remote.send command, and you're going to use the same target. You're going to specify the device and the command just like you did before. Now you can add more commands if you want to have multiple in a sequence. And if you need to, you can add delays in between each one to make sure they're registered by the device. You can also add other device actions as well in the script like lighting and other things like that. After this, you can set up a button card in Loveless to trigger this script. Pretty simple. Another thing you can do is use the custom TV card to make a virtual remote in Loveless. This card has a bunch of predefined buttons that can be tied to specific service commands. Tapping the buttons on the card will call the service and command that you specify. So all those commands that we just learned in Home Assistant can be triggered by tapping any of the buttons on this virtual remote. I use this card to combine my projector and projector screen remotes into a single virtual remote in Loveless. It's super cool and way nicer than having to worry about two remotes or even two separate sections of buttons in a Loveless dashboard. What I did is use the predefined buttons for channel up and channel down as up and down for my projector screen. I used the predefined source button as the input select for my projector. If this is starting to get a little complicated, don't worry. I have a written version on my new website I just created, and it has all the YAML code and all the information that you need. So head on over there and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. So one of the things that's always bugged me is that I have this cheapo projector that every time you turn it on, you have to go in and change the input from its default to HDMI. I have a Google Chromecast with Google TV plugged into the HDMI, and that's all I use on this projector. But every time I have to go in and change the input. Every time I wanna watch something on the setup, I gotta lower the screen, gotta turn the projector on, and then I gotta change the input to HDMI. Sounds like a lot of work and something that could be automated, right? I don't mind navigating Google TV with a Chromecast remote, but I really wanted to make it so that the kids could set up the projector by themselves if they wanted with a simple button or a voice command. I created a script that performs all these actions in a sequence so that I don't have to do them individually one by one. First, the script sends a command to lower the projector screen. This takes a while, so while it's doing that, it turns the projector on. Since the projector needs to be fully booted up before it can receive commands, I have a wait command for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, the remote then sends a command to open up the source menu. It then needs to send the right command twice to move the selection over to HDMI, and then it needs to send an OK command. In order to make sure that my cheapo projector recognizes each command, I had to put in a one second delay between each command. After the input source is selected, then the Chromecast remote can be used to control the Google TV user interface from there. I understand that there may be an Android TV integration that allows you to send even more detailed commands like which app it should open, but I haven't really messed with that yet. Now, if you've messed with that, please leave a comment or send me a message on social media. I love to hear what you did, that'd be super cool. Next, I set up a button card on Loveless that can be tapped to trigger this script. I also made another script that shuts down the projector and retracts the screen. To make this automation much simpler, I wanted to trigger the entire thing with a voice command. What's cool is that if you have Amazon Alexa integrated with Home Assistant, your scripts will show up as scenes in the Amazon Alexa app. You can then create a simple automation in the Alexa app that will trigger this scene when a voice command is given. I made a routine that triggers the projector setup script when I say, Alexa, time to watch a video. I also triggered the projector shutdown script when I say, Alexa, turn off the projector. It's video time. Alright, that's all I've got for you in this video. I don't know about you, but I am blown away that I can take a dumb projector and projector screen and turn them into smart devices with his RM Pro. It's even crazier that they're controlled by one device and there's absolutely no need for a remote anymore. The RM4 Pro is super easy to set up and use, and in my opinion, it's well worth the price for what you can do with it. 
If you're looking to automate your projector setup, I would highly recommend this device. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button. And if you have any suggestions for how I can improve this project or just any other comments, please leave them below and I'll try to respond and I'll definitely read as many as I can. I'm gonna be doing more guides like this as well as reviews and automation idea videos. So if you wanna stick around, please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when new stuff comes out. Anyway, thanks for watching, we'll see you.